Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. Hey, glad you're with me this morning. Just a real fast update on uh, the prayer request that I've had out there on Melody Amos. Uh, she is three weeks in the hospital at this point. The last couple of days, they've moved her up to the ICU floor, and she is really struggling trying to take and uh, recover from, from COVID here. So really keep her in your prayers. Um, as we go into uh, today's lesson, uh, we're going to be talking about honest or being, you know, honesty here. And so let's kind of define it here before we go. It's, it's, it's dealing righteously, showing what is right and proper to the Lord and to others. So it's, it's, it's very important that we don't just try to do what's right in front of the Lord but it's important of how we're perceived by other people, which I guess goes back to the fact that we have was talking the last couple of weeks about perception. In um, Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 35, it says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in measure, which means measure or length, in weight or in measure. Talking about just honesty. We are to be honest in what we do. We're to be honest in business. In the book of 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, verse 21, it says, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. It's important that we take and that we provide things honest in the sight of people around us, how people look at us and how people perceive us. Now, you're not going to make everybody happy there, but we need to make efforts that we not just do what's right, but we make sure it looks like we're doing what's right. I'm reminded of a uh, of a picture. I've always loved this picture. Uh, Norman Rockwell was always one of those guys I loved in the Saturday Evening Post. I loved to see some of his pictures. They were so profound. This is one of those that's just kind of so profound. I used it many years ago in one of our Sunday school classes and had it, of course, up on the, up on the projector as we was talking so you could really see it. But I, I'm sure most of us have seen this picture. And, and it's called tipping the scales. And you have a butcher on one side and you have a lady that's buying on the other side. And it's one of those old scales where you have a dial and you have a dial on both sides of it. And then you have a hanging basket. And in that hanging basket, in this, in this particular picture, we see that there is a chicken. The butcher on the one side, he's pushing down a little bit with his finger on the basket to make it weigh just a little bit more. And then the lady that's on the other side, we see her putting her finger under the basket just a little bit, just to lighten it, just a little. And it's called tipping the scales. I think it says so much about us and how that we're always trying to tip the scales our way. And many times... We do it dishonestly. Our church covenant, always loved our church covenant. Um, and it's, of course, part of the treaties of Free Will Baptist. Been under attack over, over the years here as far as saying it's out of date. Uh, it's not. Uh, everything that's there you can take and definitely take and, and, and pull straight from Scripture as far as you can back it up with Scripture. But I want us to read just a little bit of the first part of this. And it says, Having given ourselves to God by faith in Christ and adopted the word of God as our rule of faith and practice, we now give ourselves to one another by the will of God in this solemn covenant. And then we start with the covenant piece of it here. And it says, We promise by his grace to love and to obey him in all things, to avoid all appearance of evil, to abstain from all sinful amusements and unholy conformity to the world, from all sanction and use of the sale of intoxicating beverages, to provide things honest in the sight of all men. So let's look at this. 
I, I'm going to stop right there. Of course, the treatise goes on for a little ways further, but it says, we promise by his grace to love and obey him in all things to avoid all appearances of evil. That's those little white lies, right? And then just before I, I stopped there, it says to provide things honest in the sight of all men. I think it's extremely important that we do our very best to take and show our reputation to people. They need to know that we're honest. They need to know that we're straightforward. I think there's kind of this important important saying that's out there, and it says honesty is the best policy. I mean, which one of us hasn't heard that, right? I think I, think I grew up with my parents beating that into me, you know? Um, Laura Ingalls Wilder, an American writer, she once said this, the real things haven't changed. It's still best to be honest and truthful, to make the most of what we have, to be happy with simple pleasures, and to have courage when things go wrong. I, I thought it was such a profound statement that it, things haven't changed. It's still the best policy to be honest and truthful. Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 28, it reminds us of something. It says, a forward man soweth strife, and a whisper separateth chief friends. That's in the King James. I'm going to kick over real quick to English Standard Version on that one, because I really like the verbiage on English Standard on this verse. It says, a dishonest man spreads, I'm sorry, a dishonest man spreads strife. A person that's not honest stirs up trouble, and a whisper separates close friends. So, honesty is really the best policy, isn't it? If, if, if we can show honesty to others, we not only display an upright character, but we, we take and we let them know that we're fair-minded and we're truthful, that we have proper ethics, and that we have a, a really good, candid approach to life. You know, we, we, we defy this, this falsehood that might, that might be around us. Honesty shows a principle here that we are righteous. It's one of those things that says we are godly, we're righteous. James, the first chapter, verse 26 says, If a man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. If a man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, and I'll jump down to the last couple words, his religion's in vain. So honesty is associated with being open to others, always telling the truth. An honest person is to be trusted at all times. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it states in verse 25, Wherefore, he says, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we're members of one another. I think he says it all in the first few words, though, doesn't he? Wherefore, putting away lying. That's one of those old things that's supposed to pass away. You know, it's a sad fact of life that in this day and age, honesty is, is it's really lacking. You know, a little regard for others and little regards for others' things. And we should remember that if we expect it to be treat, treated right by other people, we've got to treat people right. We have to be honest in that regards. There's a saying here that, and, and I think all of us have probably heard this that a liar has to have a really good memory. You know, it's kind of well known that liars, they have to 
to lie again and again, and they keep l putting these layers of lies up there, and they've really got to remember what they've had to say here, because all of a sudden it all catches up with them very, very quickly. They're bound to be found out. In uh, Romans, the uh, second chapter, and in verse number 21, it reminds us of something here. And he, he says, Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Question being asked. He said, if you're teaching somebody else, shouldn't you also basically make sure that you are also following your teachings? And he goes on, he says, Thou that preachest the man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that saith the man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit savage? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonoreth God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. I want us to look at a couple of things right there. But notice he starts it right out. And he says, if we're supposed to be teaching others, as Christians, by the way, we're supposed to be teaching others by our life, by our example, by the words that come out of our mouth. And he says, thou that preachest the man should not steal, does thou steal? Thou that saith the man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? We need to take and apply things to our own life. If it's if it's in the scriptures and it's what we're supposed to be doing as character traits of Jesus, we need to be living it, not just telling people that they need to live it. But this last verse in verse 24, he says, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles. Now the word Gentiles, it's always talking about those that are outside of the body of Christ is what he's really referring to it here as in this situation. And he says, for the name of God is blasphemed among those that are outside the church, those that are not Christians, because we don't live what we preach. We need to be honest, right? You know, marriage, it's, it's based not only on love, but it's also based very much on truth. Um, the marriage that's going to last, it's going to have a couple of qualities, and one of those qualities is going to be being able to trust one another. If you can't trust one another, it'll never make it. In uh, Luke, the 16th chapter, in verse 10, it kind of confirms this. It says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So he, he that's faithful in that which is least, the small things, the small things that appear that they don't matter, when you give that person more responsibility, they're going to be faithful in the large picture. But that person that won't take and be truthful in the least of things, when you give that person more responsibility, it's going to greatly inflate and be that much worse. Truthfulness is important. Had something happen this last week. Had an employee walk out on me. And uh, so he was coming back the next day to pick his check up. Well, we was missing several items. One particular big item. So um, he'd already signed, or he, he was about to sign actually the paperwork on me that uh, said that he didn't have any company property whatsoever. And uh, I looked at him and I says, hey, I'm trying to find this particular item. It's always been in your truck, and uh, we can't find it, and we really need it today. 
And I says, any idea where it's at? And I watched him do a dance and look at me kind of weird and say, well, maybe it's at my house. I said, well, why would it be at your house? <laughs> what else of mine is at your house? Well, we did get it back. Didn't get the other stuff back, got that back. I want us to look over real quick, over to Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse seven. And it says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Verse number eight, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So the things that we need to concentrate our life on is in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. That's whatever things are honest, right? Whatsoever things are true. And then he goes on. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We need to remember as I kind of close this off, people are looking at us. People are looking at our lives even when we don't think they're looking at our lives. I remember many, many years ago, I had no idea that a particular friend of mine who was not a Christian was really watching my life. Had no idea until he said something one day that he was watching my every single move. He wanted to really know, am I a Christian or am I not a Christian? Do I meet his mold of being a Christian? People are watching us. That's why we need to make sure that we have these character traits of Jesus that we've been talking about here for weeks. Feel free, by the way, on the YouTube channel, you can go back and you can, you can look at several of these other character traits of Jesus that we've been going over for the last few weeks. But I'll reread Philippians, the fourth chapter, and verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and he said here, and seen in me, do. I think that really says it all. Thanks for being with me. We will catch up next week and uh, we'll continue on the character traits of Jesus. Thanks for watching.